tonight is June the 2nd, 2016, and I thought I would uh, make another quick video for you gentlemen and ladies that might watch. Um, I've been showing quite a few uh, videos lately, making a few videos lately of these uh, FFT programs, <clears throat> so I thought I'd use one tonight to actually do something with it. This is a different one, but it does the same thing. Don't know if it's any better or any worse. This one is one by Spectralab sound card called Spectralab SC. It's downloadable and uh, fully functional for 30 days. Quite expensive though, but um, I thought I'd use it. Uh, it has some features that I like better. One of the things I like better on it is that uh, the uh, DB scales are, are 10 per uh, major graduation as you can as you can see there 10 db per the uh, arda is something like 14 or 16 i think it varies a little bit sometimes <clears throat> this one has some other uh, features in it uh, it will actually go down here to uh, well it'll go up to uh, 192k Right there, you can see that it also goes up to a mag. You can get a million samples. See right there, one million forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-six. Pretty amazing, huh? <coughs> um, I think what I'm having to realize is that these FFT uh, analyzers are—they're the way to go for audio. I mean, I can see everything from from. Uh, 20 hertz up. I can see all of those, uh, all the hum down there. You know, all the 60 hertz stuff. This little, uh, see, this one says it's 80 dB down. The uh, the Macintosh was about 95 down. Actually, you can even see the hum of this one right here too. You can see it on the era output of the uh, Tektronix AA501. Let's get this guy to focus. Yeah, see this, see this wiggling in here. You, you can see the modulation on top of the error signal. This is the error signal, which is not bad. Uh, distortion is 0.08 uh, percent, but uh, there's there's 60 hertz, 60 or 120. I don't know which it is. I guess it's 60, according to the uh, FFT analyzer. Well, let's do something with it that makes it uh, worthwhile. I've broken out the uh, the magnificent old Mark III. I put some uh, modifications in it some time ago, and I made a video of it. It's called uh, Dynaco Mark III uh, Static and Dynamic Modifications, or something like that. Let's see if we get the camera down here so you can see. I can't stick my finger in it because it's uh, its own. But that little pot right there is a DC. That one right there is a DC balance. And this is the AC balance. Uh, what I've got in it is a match pair of one ohm resistor, so I set it up to 0 0.7 volts with the bias. And then I balance them with the balance pot right there by putting the meter actually across them and, and, and adjust this one for zero. So I get zero between uh, the, the, the two red ones between here and here. And then uh, by putting in a signal, I adjust this one for at least THD. So, with all that said, let me show you just how magnificent this thing actually actually works. Um, I've got it set up so you won't have to watch me fumble and make all these adjustments. But let's just focus it in on here on something. And of course, here we have the fundamental second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. But as I adjusted the the, uh, the AC balance, that the one that I just showed you there, watch the second harmonic right here. Watch this guy right here. I don't want you to watch me get shocked here, but see there? Look at that. See it go way up. See it way up there now. I can tune this thing practically like a tuned circuit. 
bring it right down until it gets that seems to be the one the most offending one see there I surpassed it there it's a minimum surpassed it again we're going to keep slipping off the pot. Damn, I don't know why it's just it's so hard. I guess I want our pot's just, it's just hard to keep it on there. Cry out loud. It's not supposed to be this hard. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to right. Right. My God. We're right there. You can just tune it right in. You can't do that uh, with, with the uh, with this little girl right here. It's just too slow. It's, it's just too slow. I, I don't know anything else to say. And look what its THD is up here. Let's see if I can. There it is. 0.08 percent. I'm not trying to run it at maximum. It's run at 10.7 watts. 0.08 percent. Just tune it right in. This uh, this FFT software is uh, is just really dandy. And uh, again, what I've set it at, you know, running these things here. Let me get this thing to focus on the the magic numbers there again. Come on, come on, little camera. You can do it. There. Almost. It's struggling, huh? Sorry. I guess maybe I'm just a little bit too close. There we go. All right. You, you don't have to run these things up, you know, at the, at the speed of light. See, this one's running at 65K uh, points. This is the... Uh, oh, darn. I keep forgetting the words that you call them. The... Uh, bit rate no it's not the bit rate anyway you know what I'm talking about and then uh, here's the FFT rate the number of bins if you run them too high then uh, it takes too long if you run them too low well that's okay too really there's really nothing wrong with that display that display is just as valid right there as a matter of fact it's not all that ugly if you ask me and uh, you can do the same thing then you can quieten it down with a number of averages and what have you and if you look right there it tells us that our THD is 0.08 percent just like uh, just like the Tektronix does so uh, the darn stuff works um, so you gotta have it gotta have it get yourself a you can get the Arta free pay for it if you want to I'm not selling it or promoting it, but and then get yourself a an external USB sound card for 50 bucks, and you've got actually quite a nice setup here for uh, for doing this kind of work. And as much as I uh, almost don't want it to be so, it just outperforms the heck out of the uh, old analog. Uh, spectrum analyzers yeah well one of the things that we did lose here I'll have to admit that if we go if we make our bin rate too small we completely lost all of our 60 Hertz down here maybe we don't care right now so we may have to slow it down or put more points in there to uh, start seeing you know our, well 60 Hertz is actually off, off the screen right now Let's see, there's 131K. We can bring it all back. That's not important. Now, if you look at low frequencies, you, you do have to put this FFT rate up really high uh, to get it in resolution down at, down at 20 hertz and stuff. So there you go. And look who came to visit me. Miss Max the Cat. Well, anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoy this and uh, get yourself a FFT program and a little uh, sound card and 
and enjoy. Okay, well, while we got this thing out, let's just do some experimenting here. Maybe some blind experimenting. Okay, what I have got here, I've, I've uh, scrolled it back over to, we, to where we can see the 60 hertz here. Right here, and it's just a hair above minus 80. Let's see if we can work on that. I know that that's a little light for the camera, but no, there it is. I think you can see that okay. And you can probably even see the minus 80 over there. Right? Okay, so that's what it is. Now, I want to show you some experimenting I've been done. I'm going to duplicate it here. One is right here on this 6AN8. <clears throat> I brought out a shield right here. And if I put the shield over it without grounding it, I'll show you what happens. And then I'm going to uh, just uh, hook a wire onto it here and ground it and put it over it and show you what happens. So I'm going to be doing that while, while you're looking at the, uh, at the hum at that 60 hertz pulse there. So let's get a really nice view of that. That should be about right there. Maybe even be able to see the, the THD in there, see if it increases. Okay. Now watch when I put the shield over it, just holding it in my fingers with the shield ungrounded. See, THD is 088 or so. See, THD went up to 096. And we went up, whoo, we went way up. We went up like 8 dB or so. See, there's with it off. There's with it on. So I'm introducing quite a bit of hum in it. Okay, now I'm going to put the ground clip on the um, shield, clip it to the chassis, and then I'm going to put it over it. Let's see, 088, and cover it. See, it didn't change it at all. Didn't do diddly for it. Didn't change a thing. If anything, it raised it ever so slightly if we can believe those numbers out there that are blinking between 0 8, 8. Nah, that's the same so putting a shield on it and grounding it of course didn't help the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to flip the thing over hot and hopefully stay alive and I'm going to clip some capacitors in across this can increasing the capacitance there's always the belief so I'm going to just uh, clip them in across here increasing it by 47 microfarads that's a significant amount and we will watch it again and see if anything gets better okay let's make sure we got negative to negative and plus to plus Okay, so I'm just going to touch it to the different points there on the uh, on the capacitor. Again, while watching THD and uh, and that 60 hertz, it's just got to focus in there nice again. So we get a nice crisp picture. There we go. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to touch it. Okay, we got zero. 8 8 again. Okay, here is one point. You'll hear it pop. See things change, see it calm down. If it went down at all, I can't tell. It, it looks like it's 0 8 7. So it went down. If it went down at all, 0 8 7. Okay, let's take it back off. Ooh. 088. Well, maybe that changes a pretty insignificant amount. Okay, here's another one. Yep, see? Whoa! Nothing's changing. Here's the, the third one. I do this one hand in my pocket. Trust me. 
085. Actually, that one went down a tiny bit, didn't it? And then the last one. No, it's this one here. So it doesn't really do anything for it. it, it it's so close to the same when we discharge this thing. It is so close to the same that increasing the capacitor doesn't do much for THD and the uh, 60 hertz home level. And we know it's a full wave rectifier and 120 hertz is what's primarily coming out of it. But I didn't see that going anywhere either. So this idea of always adding monstrous capacitors into power supply I've always known this. It, that's not the answer. Now some people will say, well that increases the, makes a better transient response. Well, maybe it does. I don't know. I'm, I'm not set up or haven't thought that through how to measure that yet, but if you put the value of the capacitors in it that the amplifier was designed for, it's probably going to work about as well as, as anything. So, um, Anyway, that's some practical use of the uh, of the uh, FFT the little FFT programs. I'll switch over to the other one just so you can see it. Uh, let's go back to the one I've been looking at, the one I've been playing with so much, the ARTA program. And there it is. It's FFT and. Um, See, its FFT will go up to 131K, and it does a good job too. I, I got I got no issue with it. And uh, it's certainly priced better, but I, I don't like the way these things. See, this is 56 and this is 70. Minus 56, minus 70. So it's 14 dB. It's kind of goofy there. So you actually have to end up clicking on the fundamental, clicking on the harmonic and, and subtracting to uh, to get the numbers that you want. That's one of the reasons I like the other one a little bit better, but the price difference is pretty staggering.